rise and fall of Tian Shin Han. Or as in the manga they call him Ten Shin Han. Who cares? This guy. This video is overdue. Way overdue I suppose. Should have been done ages ago but hey. And oh dear oh dear. Wow. Now first of all you're gonna say how did Tian even rise in the first place? When was he ever anything? Well, to his credit, in the earlier Dragon Ball series, as in Dragon Ball, he was actually a main star, one of the main villains in the tournament arcs gave Goku tough fights. Excellent performances from Tien in Dragon Ball. In fact, I've always said this, if you want to see Chao Su fight, you want to see Yamcha fight, you want to see Tien fight, watch Dragon Ball. This is when these guys got off, this is when these guys had some airtime had a chance to display their abilities but as the series progressed these guys got lesser airtime and were literally written off screen some of these guys coming out here looking terrible Yamcha who was a low level talent announcer in Dragon Ball was now a hundred percent complete jobber bonafide 100 percent Chao Su practically non-existent and Tien he held on in there for a bit in fact the best moment of this man's career is when he held up second form cell period in fact that's the only thing people remember tn for greatest moment of his career by far no debate and just because of this moment tn gained massive amounts of fans many people were rocking with tn because of that he showed heart he showed guts he showed grit held off a creature miles more powerful than him gaining him all sorts of credibility everyone looked at Tien as a solid fighter definitely not the strongest but definitely a worthy opponent because of this so when fans heard that there was a new Dragon Ball series coming everyone was hyped and I don't care who you are if you were a fan of Dragon Ball Z you were hyped for super and one of the reasons you were hyped was to see all your old favorite characters that you grew up on progress you wanted to know if Piccolo got stronger. You wanted to know if Tien learned any new techniques. You wanted to know how powerful Krillin was at this time, right? But unfortunately, this was the worst thing that could have happened to Tien. Dragon Ball Super took a dump on your boy. Let's just get straight to the tournament arc, which was the build up to it and the burial of Tien. So basically, Goku is going around trying to gather fighters for this tournament. And everyone's now happy. Why are they happy? Because they know it's a tournament arc. So all their characters, once again, that you grew up on, would get a chance to shine. That's the good thing about tournaments. Everyone gets to showcase their abilities. So once again, people were hyped. As Goku was going around gathering all these fighters, all of your old favorites had a chance to shine. <laughs> right? People were hyped about this. Gohan had a power up, Piccolo had a power up, freaking Krillin had a power up where he was there trading freaking Kamehameha's with Goku. <laughs> Some ridiculous shit but the point of all of this was, was to make all these characters look credible to join the tournament. So all of these characters are now getting a bit more airtime and a bit more background story. It now comes to T and Shin An's turn and I swear these writers must have forgot the freaking purpose of what they were trying to do. Because it comes to his episode and they buried that man six feet under. Goku inquires about Tien and finds out that Tien is now running his own freaking dojo. Okay, so this character has actually got some progression. And unlike the rest of these fighters, the man's actually doing something with himself. So well done Tien, we give you that. We now see Tien in all his glory in his own dojo with his own students. And these guys are clearly jabronis and jobbers because they're easily impressed with a simple key charge. So we know from here, these guys are not with the shits. They are amateurs, they are beginners. Keep that in mind probably just barely above farmer with the shotgun level <laughs> nah but i digress goku gets to the dojo and sees tien and he's actually impressed with tien he's actually surprised that tien actually made something of his life right tien then proceeds to drop a bombshell and i mean a gigantic bombshell which tore the shitty writing and script apart tien makes it abundantly clear that he always trains he is always training. 
he went into the mountains to better himself and is now so good that the people of the town decided to join his dojo. They saw him training, working out and were obviously impressed. He now has many students. This character has always been training since Cell, since Boo, all that time. Okay. So now all TN fans around the world are now hype like, whoa, okay, that's good because they're now thinking this is the same guy that took on Cell and he's been training ever since then. And since everyone is getting a power up, TN must be OP as hell. TN fans are happy right now, right? Well, that happiness turned into instant sorrow as TN Shinhan is made to look weaker than he ever did before ever in the very episode he was supposed to get over in. Devastating. As Goku and Tien sit down talking, we now find out that there's some commotion in the town. This random girl they added to the episode early on named Wee Wee or Yurin or something like that has cast a spell on all of Tien Shinhan's students. She is using witchcraft. It is now up to Goku, Master Roshi, Tien and Chaosu to stop this madness in the town, right? We now see these no counts, these jobbers running up and down the town like they're on the set of the Michael Jackson thriller video, destroying the town. This is the big threat of this episode. Chaosu steps up. Chaosu says, let me stop them. Tries to attack one of them and his attack bounces off as if Chaosu was nothing. Garbage tear confirmed for Chaosu. <laughs> Master Roshi then says, oh, it's a magical spell. But here's the question. Shouldn't Chaosu be more powerful than this at this point? Didn't Chaosu go up in the mountains with Tien Shinhan to train all these years? Wasn't this the guy that trained with the Z fighters on the Kami lookout? Shouldn't this guy not be stronger than this at this point after all these years? I mean, come on, I mean, no one gives a crap about Chaosu, but really, he's not any stronger than this? If you're a Chaosu fan, it only gets worse. <laughs> Your boy takes another knock to his credibility. Chaosu goes to remove one of the paper spells of one of the jobber students. The student turns around and Chaosu shits his pants. A character that the boss to take on Nappa is now wetting himself for who? And this is swept under the rug because Chao Su is considered a goofball and weak, so no one cared. Skipping ahead, we now find out that Master Roshi is put under the same spell. He was goofing around in the fight and put under this spell, showing you that Master Roshi is still goofs around. He's still perving, he's still watching his aerobics of these women. This guy is still slacking off. He's now put under this spell. Tien Shinhan sees this and goes in to stop him. Tien Shinhan fans now stand up because this is a cool throwback. Master Roshi versus Tien, this should be cool, right? These two characters both jump into the air, trade blows and lo and behold, Master Roshi knocks Tien Shinhan on his ass. Tien fans all around the world fall off their chair and slowly walk up to the screen and say, what? What the hell is going on? Tien decides to get serious and now pulls out the multiplying arms, no holding back, and proceeds to jump in a straight line as Master Roshi fries his ass with a lightning attack. Done. Finish. Master Roshi has effectively defeated Tien with two attacks. With ease. <laughs> what in the world? It seems like the writers were writing this episode then completely forgot about the freaking purpose of the episode. You were trying to make these characters look credible for the tournament, right? You wanted to make Tien Shinhan look strong and apparently you wanted to make Master Roshi look strong. Instead, you buried Tien. This was a squash match. Master Roshi squashed Tien. He slapped him down, then he one-shotted him. A character that surpassed him years upon years ago, who should be hundreds of times stronger than him. A character who kept up his training while this guy was reading magazines and shit. Come on. They buried your boy. We now continue further down into Dragon Ball Super, the Twilight Zone, which is what this must have been, as Tien is on his hands and knees <laughs> at the mercy of Master Roshi, who is now charging the Kamehameha wave to kill him. He effectively is about to die here and Goku has to jump in and make the save. 
Goku jumps in and slaps away the Kamehameha wave, which destroys a, wait for it, tiny pieces of rocks from a mountain. Man, this entire episode was a hot mess and embarrassing at some points. You are trying to sell to me that Master Roshi is at his strongest in this episode, right? He's on the mind control, he's not holding back, right? You are telling us this guy has had secret training. So why does this man's signature attack look weaker than it's ever looked before? And the whole excuse of key control cannot be used there. He's on the mind control, okay? He's not worried about controlling key. He's a berserk. This is his strongest attack and it destroys a couple of rocks from a freaking mountain. When in Dragon Ball, this guy was using this attack to destroy the moon. Do you see how bad this looks? Now I'm not saying you need to destroy the moon in every episode, but for the love of God, couldn't you have had him blast away the freaking mountain? Isn't that what you're going for? Can you not show any form of consistency here? Good grief, we now travel further down into the twilight zone as Goku trades blows with Master Roshi. That's right. Excuse number one, Goku wasn't trying. Cool story bro, but Goku actually thinks differently. In fact, he said Master Roshi was making his fist tingle and he loved it. Excuse number two, Goku was in his base form, unfortunately not an excuse. Goku in his base form should be millions of times stronger than Master Roshi at this point. This is ridiculous. Goku has undergone training from freaking Whis. Fought Beerus when they had the freaking universe shaken. Fought Goku Black and lost many times. Doesn't this guy get a Zenkai boost after he loses a fight? How many times did Goku Black beat the hell out of Goku? At this point in time, Master Roshi shouldn't be able to even react or see Goku fight, making this scene complete nonsense. Goku then proceeds to tell the audience that Master Roshi has been squeezing in some secret training, so I guess that makes everything okay and everything's fine, so yeah. Goku then jumps into the air and hits Roshi with a Kamehameha wave, and that's pretty much it. The episode then ends with Master Roshi looking like Roman Reigns fused with John Cena and Tien Shinhan looking like freaking Spike Dudley out here. Come on. In the episode where he was supposed to get over. The episode has his name in the title. Let's just call it how we see it people. Tien Shinhan was a talent announcer in his own episode. The dude was used <laughs> to get Master Roshi over. Master Roshi squashed him. Effectively, Tien was a jobber in his own episode. Facts. And it only gets worse. Next episode, we find out that Goku and Tien are now teaming up against Gohan and Piccolo. So once again, fans are standing up. This is a great way to have all these guys look good, right? If all of these guys put on a good show, everyone looks strong. That's how easy it is to get a character back over, right? Well, apparently wrong. So now we get to the part where these two teams are supposed to fight. Before the fight starts, we have Tien now worrying about if he's gonna injure them or not. Goku tells him, listen, you better go all out or we're both gonna get washed. The fight starts. Gohan trades blows with Goku. By the way, throughout this entire episode, they had Tien looking worried, shook, like a deer trapped in headlights, like he didn't, he's never seen this kind of fight before. Dude was worried all throughout the episode, okay? It now comes to his turn to get involved. Tien jumps in to try and attack and is gut shotted and taken out again with ease. Gohan is now taking it to Goku. We now see Tien finally recover. He now tries to line up Gohan for his tri-beam. Goku tells him, listen, don't worry about me. Worry about the man that was charging the freaking attack before the fight started in front of your face. Tien, a fighter that's now more experienced. A fighter that you're telling me has been training every day. More seasoned, didn't remember, didn't sense Piccolo charging a massive key attack in front of him. Now before this guy shoots a quick attack or runs in and does a quick attack to stop Piccolo from charging, Tien decides to charge his own freaking attack. 
trying to line up Piccolo for the tri beam. Gohan sees this and shoots a badly animated key attack, which came from his freaking finger. Never seen this attack before, some random shit that explodes in front of Tien. Then Gohan comes on with the everlasting, most telegraphed Hulk Hogan double axe handle, which knocks Tien through the ground, ending his chapter and ending his run in this episode. This might as well have been a handicap match. Okay, the title should have been Piccolo and Gohan versus Goku because that's what this was. This guy did nothing. Didn't even land an attack or get an attack off. They done him dirty. We now have another funny scene where Tien Shinhan, once a warrior, is now begging off Goku and Gohan to stop fighting. Oh, please stop. <laughs> you might kill each other. You've gone too far. So not only has this guy lost his fighting sense, his fighting experience and his fighting power, he's lost his balls. These guys are acting like they've never seen anything like this before. You had Chao Su saying something like, oh, this is what it's like to see two Saiyans go all out. What? Where have you characters been? Are these the same characters from Dragon Ball Z? These guys have been in freaking wars with Nappa, Vegeta, Cell, Boo, and they're worried about this little fight here? Tien was shitting his pants. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Alright, PTN man. Why they gotta do your boy like that? Huh? They're treating your boy like a local jobber here. If the last episode he was Spike Dudley, now he's a local jobber. You know what a local jobber is? The guy's in the ring without the music that weigh 100 pounds with no tan. That's what TN was in this episode. They had the guy looking shook and useless. The tournament of power comes and the dude had a minimal impact. Barely had any time on screen. And when he did get it, he got eliminated by some bomb who he eliminated himself. So they both took each other out. But here's the question. Who is this character? Who is this jobber? Would someone please tell me the name of this character? And do that without looking on the Dragon Ball Wikipedia page. Please, what's his name? <laughs> That's what I thought. A freaking no count spent the rest of the time on the bench chair leading and Dragon Ball Super eventually ends with Tien Shinhan looking worse than he ever looked in any Dragon Ball series ever before. Terrible freaking booking and lazy writing absolutely ruining a character. They booked this guy like a complete jobber. Ruining what little <laughs> reputation he had before I, like, I don't know. Alright, PTN. They buried this man six feet under and used Chao Su as his headstone. And why? And that's the question the world needs to know. Why? Why do this? Oh, let me leave you with this question. Will Tien Shinhan ever get a better moment? Ever get a better showing than this again? Here's the answer. Nope.